you might as well put those hands together. Can we give God praise for being a deliverer? Come on, go on and be honest about it. Has God ever delivered you? Has God kept you? Has God been good to you? Has God been a faithful God? Well, the song said, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Come on, let's clap our hands. Give God praise for being our deliverer and our keeper. Bless his name. Amen at the church, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning and welcome to worship on this day to those here in the sanctuary, certainly to those who are streaming. We thank God for this privilege to be in worship one more time. Amen. We're going to proceed with our worship services. We encourage all of you to join in as we give God glory on this day for being such a good God. Let us pray. Gracious and everlasting God, how we do thank you and praise you for your presence. You woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. You kept us all week long, and you've given us this privilege to worship you once again in spirit and in truth. We don't take it for granted, oh God. We pause and tell you thank you. Thank you. We pray now, God, that you bless our worship experiences to your glory. And we'll be mindful to give your name all the honor and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good morning, Shalom. Our scripture reading will be coming from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. Again, that is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. If you have it, say amen. I will be reading from the King James Version, and it reads, And it came to pass... When the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John saw this, they said, Lord, Will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. And it came to pass that as they went in that way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home in my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, 
is fit for the kingdom of God. That concludes our reading. This is the word of God, and I do believe that it is true. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. We're going to ask that you stand with us this morning as we sing one of the great hymns of the church. The blood will never lose its power. Verse 1. The blood...
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. Amen. What a powerful. Hallelujah. Yeah. Church in a world that is constantly shifting, and there are a lot of shifts. Isn't it good to know that there has been no shift in the power of the blood of Jesus? Yeah, the blood still works. Yeah, the blood still has the power to save, still has the power to cover us. Hadn't been no shift in the blood. No, the blood is a constant in the life of the child of God. And the blood still has the power to heal, still has the power to set free. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. That blood gives us strength, not just today, but from day to day. How many of you glad it won't ever lose its power? Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for your blood. Thank you, God, for your blood. Amen. As we're preparing our hearts for prayer on today, uh, we go with full assurance that we are covered and that our connection to God has been sealed by the everlasting power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Certainly want to thank God for our prayer leaders, our prayer team, prayer ministry that continues to go before God day after day on behalf of the prayer concerns that are called in. First Church, we want to thank God and give God praise on today for Rashelia Walker, who is home after being hospitalized this week. Uh, the blood still works. God is a healer. We also praise God for Kaylin McNeil, who has also had a surgery on this past week, and she's at home recovering from a successful surgery, and we give God glory and praise for that as well. For our hospitalizations, our prayers are with Robert Rice. Our bereavement list is long, but our God is certainly able. Janice Moore funeralized her mother, Laura Moore, who's also the cousin of Minister Sonia and Deacon Buford McClendon and Cynthia Gasway. Mother Leola Hawkins funeralized her brother-in-law, Roy George. Laura Shonda Reed funeralized her husband, Paul Reed. Robert Rice and the passing of his wife and Shalom family member, Glenda Rice. The mother of Robin Jayoni, Shariko Morton, and Sheena Rice. Also the grandmother of Mariah, Maher, Gregory, Alexis, Trayvon, Angel, and Kamisha. Very faithful family in the life of our church. Our prayers are with Kenneth and Betty Calvert and the passing of their sister and sister-in-law, Angela Calvert of Lakewood, California. Angela is also the aunt of Kendra Calvert. We're praying with Deacon Deborah Curtis and Calvin Payne in the passing of their cousin, Lavelle Payne of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Our prayers are with Alice Jenkins in the passing of her husband, Horace Jenkins, father and grandfather of Tiffany Jenkins and Jalen Robinson, and then the brother of Marilyn King. We're praying for Kiana Neely in the passing of her nephew, Kevin Henderson. Prayers are with Lisa Thames Warfield in the passing of her mother and Shalom family member, Christine Brownlee. Praying with Minister Sonia and Deacon Buford McClendon in the passing of their son, Buford McClendon Jr., father of Deja and Tyreek McClendon, and brother of Dana Hunter. How many of you know earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal? Amen. We're going to continue in prayer for all of the families that are in bereavement. And as always, we are praying for our pastor, Sister Cheryl Clark, as well as the entire Clark family and the entire Shalom Church family. And then on today, as always, our prayers are for you. If you're sitting here in the sanctuary and you know not Christ in the pardoning of your sins, you have not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you have not accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior. We want to invite you to say yes to Jesus Christ on today and make Jesus your choice. Somebody know that's the best decision we can ever make. And so we want to invite you to say yes to Jesus Christ. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so if that's you, or you don't have a church home, a place where you can be nurtured in the faith, 
We invite you to consider this fellowship where you will be nurtured under the preaching, teaching, and praying of this ministry, certainly of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. James Clark. The choir is going to now lift our hearts in song, after which we will be led to the throne of grace. Amen. your presence. We come giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, for you alone are worthy. You are worthy, O oh God, because you have created us and not we ourselves. You are worthy, O oh God, because you have kept us from danger seen and unseen. You are worthy, O oh God, because you have kept us even when we could not keep ourselves. We thank you right now, O oh God, that we have another opportunity to come before your presence with like-minded individuals. We know that we are not perfect. We lay before you every last one of our faults and our failures. We confess before you right now that we are undone. We thank you for your word on today, oh God, that tells us if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you for another chance, oh God. We pray now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would look beyond our faults and meet us where we need you. 
We need you, oh God, for healing in our bodies. We need you to heal our hearts. We need you to heal our minds, oh God. We need you to heal our land, oh God. But we realize that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we know that you are still in control. We pray now, oh God, that as you put your healing out in the land, oh God, that you would comfort the hearts of the bereaved. We know that there is indeed no sorrow on earth that heaven cannot heal. And we thank you, oh God, that you can lift up a bowed down head even in the midnight hour when it looks like we're all alone, oh God. Because you said in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And we thank you for being our company keeper, oh God. We thank you for making a way out of no way, oh God. We thank you for food on our table, but we realize that it is the bread of heaven that can feed us until we want no more. We thank you, oh God, for being our salvation, for the blood of Jesus, oh God, that covers all of our sins. Lord God, we lift up our pastor on you today. We ask, oh God, that as you continue to bless him and keep him, oh God, that you would bless his entire family, oh God. But Lord, let us come together to worship you in spirit and in truth, not for entertainment, Lord, but to hear your word, to strengthen us, that when we leave this place, we leave to serve you, oh God. You've gifted every last one of us to serve where we are. We thank you for your power, oh God. Bless your name on today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, oh God. Give us the strength to put it all in your hands, oh God, and leave it there. We thank you for another chance, Lord. We bless your name on today. In the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and give you thanks. Amen.
Praise the Lord on this morning. So happy to uh, be in worship one more time with persons of kindred mind and spirit. God is a good God, and he is always worthy to be praised. I want to invite your attention uh, to the Gospel of Mark chapter 4. Verses 26 to 29. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. Though he does not know how. All by itself, the saw produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. This is the word of God. I believe it's true. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. You may be seated. Again, so good to see so many of you present today and those that are part of our streaming community. Thank you so much for your presence and your prayers. Paulette, good to see you this, uh, this morning. God is faithful. Yeah. God is faithful as well as others who've been out sick and uh, you're sitting uh, where I can identify you but just know that uh, uh, you've been in my prayers. Uh, the growing seed, the growing seed. To live is to grow. When we stop growing, we stop living. When we stop growing intellectually and spiritually, we can rest, rest assured that decline is underway. Uh, uh, that Jesus here in this chapter uh, gives us through parables the art of continued growth. That Jesus teaches that the kingdom of God is about growth. That the kingdom of God is constantly growing. We don't know how it grows, but it does. Even when we start to think that the kingdom of God has lost its influence and power, it is slowly and surely growing. That in the parable where various soils are mentioned, it is understood that without any help from the farmer, the seed germinates greatly, expands in size, and finally produces a significant harvest. Not all the soil is receptive to the seed, which is the word of God. There is some tilling to do before the seed has a chance to work. More importantly, we have to understand that despite what appears to be failure in sowing, there will always be a rich harvest. That in the parable, the sower must not expect immediate results that the processes of life are mysterious and growth is gradual it said first the blade then the ear followed by the whole grain in the ear The kingdom of God is like a farmer who scattered seeds on the ground. Night and day while he was asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows. 
but he does not understand how it happens. That the earth produces the crops on its own. First the leaf blade pushes through, then the levels of wheat are formed, and finally the grain ripens. As soon as the grain ripens, the farmer comes and harvests. <laughs> the parable depicts the miracle of growth. It depicts the manner of growth and the maturation of growth. First, there is there is the faithful sower and the task of the sower is to sow. Therefore, be faithful in sowing. It is not the responsibility of the sower to be worried about the conditions in which they have to sow. Just so. Whatever is produced in sowing is really in the Lord's hands. That the sowing may be difficult, the sowing may be painful, it may involve hardship and sacrifice. But after one has planted, one can go and rest. While he is wake or sleep, there is miraculous growth. While he is wake or sleep, there is this miracle of growth. The seed grows and the sower knows not how. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I pause there because the sower often thinks that they are responsible for it all. Uh, there are the forces of earth that are beyond human interference and control. The grain, the sunlight, the rain, the earth, the summer air are all out of the control of the soil. The sower knows that uh, if they sow, they shall reap. Uh, that if one faithfully sows, there will be a return. Just don't know when. Don't know how. And we need not sow and look for what we have sown. I like this passage in Isaiah 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, he will truly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. 
As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth or making it blood and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Hallelujah. That the seed contains what we cannot see when we are sowing it. All the work is happening underground. That the seed is the embryonic stage of the plant life cycle. And when the seed begins to grow, one part of the embryo becomes the plant while the other becomes the root of the plant. While one part is growing above the ground, the other is deep, being rooted, being firmly fixed, being established and grounded. Hallelujah. Kind of sounds like believers who uh, are fortunate enough to have heard the word and received it. Yeah, that there, there is growth in two directions. Yeah, above ground and in the ground where your roots are deep and being firmly fixed, established and grounded. Bless his high name. Yeah, I know, I know some people wondering how you made it over. Uh, it's because that word that's been planted has been firmly fixed and you're rooted and grounded. And so whatever happens, it doesn't bother you as much as it does others who hear the word and as soon as they hear it, all of this is in chapter 4, that the enemy comes and snatches it before it's had a chance to germinate in you. Hallelujah. Where it had a chance to grow in you, making a difference. Uh, and, but when you receive the word, hallelujah, and it starts to grow in you, and that seed starts to sprout and become rooted and established it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, then we know that we are strongly committed to Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Trust in God for all things, knowing that God is working it out somehow. Don't know how. In fact, on the surface, everything looks the same. But underneath the surface, yeah, yeah, in a, in a place where our physical sight cannot observe, God is rearranging the furniture yeah, on our behalf. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, and, and there's just some things as believers you just got to know. Yeah, even if the evidence points in another direction, you, you just got to know it. Hallelujah. Even when the people around you are talking to you and they are suggesting to you stuff that points against your knowing. But when you're deeply rooted, 
when, when you have read his word and his word has germinated in your heart and he's given you revelation from his word, you got to hold on to what you know. Bless his high name. I feel something moving me in here that our God is able. Let me testify, I've, I've seen God do the impossible. I've seen him do it. Yeah, yeah, and, it, and, and, and I was so convicted in my heart until it made me preach harder as a, as a sower, understanding that all I had to do was just sow and God would do the rest. Hallelujah. What, what, whatever you do, you learn how to just sow. It, it, may, it may look like people not paying no attention. It may look like your son and your daughter not paying any attention. It may look like your family members don't care about what you're talking about. But it ain't your job to be worried about what they look like. Your job is just to sow and then watch God go to work. And somebody in here is a witness. He knows how to turn that thing around. He can reach where we can't go. Bless his high name. This, this is how I know it's real, because he saved you and me. That there's a period of waiting for the harvest uh, because that's all we can do. <laughs> you can't hurry, God. <laughs> that's what Grandma said. Yeah, you can't hurry, God. Yeah, you can say right now in your prayer all you want. Do it right now. And it ain't going to make God no difference because there is no emergency with God. And whenever God shows up, it's going to be on time. Yeah, he knows how to reverse the cycle or move you into it, hallelujah, and make everything all right where you are. Our God is a great God. I wonder if I can't find a witness in the house this morning. Just find you somebody and just say, I know for myself, my God is a great God. Hmm. We, we got to know that growth ain't in our hands. No, no, growth ain't in our hands. Yeah, we, we sow and then we believe. Yeah, we sow and we move forward like we know it's going to be growth. Yeah, we, we sow and we start to change our language like we know that God is up to something. <laughs> I feel him right now. And you do too. You asked him to do some things. And on the surface, it looks like he's not moving in your behalf. But you don't need to be discouraged. You keep on praising God. You got to praise him like what you asked for has already happened. Yeah, so when it arrives at your front door, you won't be surprised. Our God is able. Oh, Lord. I know we got to come to the table, but I wonder, can you holler at me? Just say, he's able, he's able. <laughs> that in this season of social madness and cultural complexity, some of us uh, are looking around like God is not in, in control. That somehow God has lost control of what he's created. And I'm here to tell you, not so. Yeah, I don't care what laws are changed or what laws are added or who's in the White House, uh, that kind of thing. I'm not saying we don't have to do our part. We got to do our part. Yeah, we got to participate in the democratic process. It's a part of how we sow. Yeah, but after that, we leave the results to God. And then you got to know that you know that you know that you know that you belong to God and he's able to take care of you even when uh, people with resources are behind the scenes scheming on you 
Yeah, our, our, our God has a radar on us. Yeah, and, and if there's danger to the right, he'll tell us to go left. And if there's danger on the left, he'll tell us to, to go right. And if there's danger on the right and left, he'll tell us to move forward and go straight. Yeah, and then sometimes he'll put you in a holding pattern where you just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now why is that? Because he's in charge. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm in too deep now. Yeah, I ain't going nowhere. No, no, no. I've seen the lightning flashing. And I've heard the thunder roar. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul, but I heard the voice of Jesus telling me, fight on. He promised. I said he promised. Never to leave us. Never to leave us. Never to leave us alone. And so why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadow come? Yeah, why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion? A constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Ooh, I, I feel a shout coming on. Yeah, I know he watches me. Yeah, that he got eyes. Yeah, that can see where I can't see. Just got to trust him. I sing because I'm happy. Yeah, I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I got to get out your way. That I've tried to say basically three things. Uh, that there's a period of waiting after you sow. Because the manner of growth is out of our hands. Yeah that this is really a faith walk. Yeah, that we sow and then we trust that God is going to do the rest. Hallelujah. Yeah, we, we sow and then it's out of our control. Yeah, and then God will do the rest. If I surveyed the house and those of you at home looking on, all you got to do is look back over your life and see places where you sow and God did the rest. Yeah, yeah, and God did the rest. God did the rest. Food on the table. Yeah, roof over your head. Hallelujah. God is always clothes on your back because he's always done the rest. Yeah, that, that, the, that the second thing that I've tried to say is that the development of growth uh, happens over time. That's good for people to know that growth isn't instantaneous that it happens over time this, this even includes the Christian life that you, you, don't, you don't get born again and then you become um, a super saint it happens over time yeah, that, that's some things you got to learn by trial and error. There, there's some mistakes that you make yeah, that, that looks like it will uh, have you in a place where you never recover. But God uses that worst moment to get the most out of us. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that place in your Christian walk where you had a setback. Yeah, you were on fire, but situations and circumstances put the fire out. Some, some people even left the church. Yeah, went into a far country. Yeah, and uh, it was in the far country that they learned their best lessons. They thought they were going to learn it in church, but they, they, they couldn't feel at home with other saints yeah and so they went into a far country yeah thinking that they were going to have this uh, uh, great union with those of kindred mind and spirit only to discover that they met themselves 
in the far country. So when they made it back, because once, once, you, once you've been seated, that, that once you say yes to the word of God, it ain't no hiding place that if I make my bed in heaven, he's there. And if I make my bed in hell, he's there. If I go to the other most parts of the earth, I, I, he, he's going to find me there. There ain't no hiding place once you've been seated. That once you've been reared in it. Hallelujah. Once you've been Sunday school through it. Yeah, once you've been baptized in BTU. Yeah, okay, that, that ain't you. That, that ain't you. Yeah, that, that ain't you. That, that, that once you've sat under the word, and the Holy Ghost put that word down in your heart and something came over you that you couldn't hardly explain that moment but you got fed up with all of the auxiliaries and the churchiness of people who were going through the motion and you left going where you were going and then you found out that that word started growing in your heart you didn't want it to. You were doing everything possible to keep that growth from happening. But that seed is mysterious. Hallelujah. It's, it's how God can fix a broken heart. How God enters us and starts to pull out the weeds that really blocks us from understanding his love. And then when we finally make it back, Woo, because we do make it back. You ain't thinking about no order. You ain't thinking about, uh, is it time for me to shout? All you know is when you start to think about how good God has been and where he brought you from, it don't make no difference where they are in service. There's a praise that comes over you and you can't help it. Some people stand and shout. Others sit and wave. Some people stand, wave, and dance. Others throw back their head and let out a holler, whatever your pleasure. If you know it ain't been nobody but the Lord Jesus that brought you from yonder to right now. Something ought to be stirring in your, in your heart right now. And you ought to get a bad case of I can't help myself. I'm trying to get out of your way. You ought to be able to say to your neighbor, excuse me, right about up in here. But when I was sinking deep in sin, love lifted me. And while the blood is running warm in my veins, I need to open up my mouth. And tell him, tell him thank you. Yeah, don't you agree with that? Yeah, while, while we can. Yeah, while we can. And then I want to encourage you, don't be impatient with people who uh, you can't see the growth because they keep doing the same thing over and over again. And you get frustrated with them like you died for them. All, all you need to understand is that the Lord is doing something in them that you can't see. They keep showing up, don't they? I ain't talking about what they smell like. Yeah, they got this, uh, they got this uh, the skunk. That came from a deacon. They got, this, they got this skunk weed that if you walk through it, you can get a contact. That's what I heard. I want, I want, I want the, I want the skunk smoking 
we people. I want you to know you welcome here. I, 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 I want you to know that if somebody around you can't stand it, we got plenty of other seats where they can change their seat. But I guarantee you, once you hear that word and that word starts to germinate in your heart, the Lord will start making a difference. Yes, he will. I'm going to invite those that have, have been on this journey a while. You want to help me close this sermon because we had not always been where we are. No, no. We had some growing to do. It was slow growth. But oh, ain't you glad that the Lord didn't give up on you when other people did. Ain't you glad that the Lord gave you another chance. And here you are today. I go to my seat. I go to my seat, but if I were you, I wouldn't fold my arms and act like God hadn't done anything. Yeah, you already know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, look at us now. Hallelujah. Got a long way to go, but he's brought us from a mighty long way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's been slow growth, but it's been short growth. And I praise your name for everything that you continue to do. Hallelujah. They hung him high, stretched him wide, and then they planted him in the tomb. Hallelujah. And, 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 and that seed sprouted. Yeah, broke loose out of the tomb. Yeah, you do know that grass can grow out of concrete, don't you? It's mysterious. Our faith is in a mysterious God. He got up. <laughs> With all power of heaven and earth in his hand. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, constant growth, slow growth, yeah, yeah. There may be somebody present today. You, 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 you. You think because you have done some things that are not in line with the Christian faith that you don't qualify. And I'm here to tell you that there are people who've been walking in the faith for years that are not totally overcomers if you're here today and if you're looking on that the growth of the believer based upon the seed they received is a gradual process you're not running a race with anybody although so many people trying to conform you in their image. My daughter, my son, you belong to the Lord. And I want to encourage you to be, to be patient. He's crafting your life even now for what he has prepared for you since your conception. So if you've never really accepted him, now is the time to do so. And Lord and Savior of your life, that's, that's more than a church attendee. 
attending the fellowship only becomes meaningful after you accept it the Lord Jesus Christ and are baptized and some of you say but I've done that and I've been baptized but my growth is still not where it needs to be that's why he has you here for such a time as this to hear this word this word this this word to let you know that growth is is happening even though you can't see it and you're not in control of it and now that you acknowledge it watch him take you to the next station some call it levels but to the next station in our educational pursuits there's some people who are so gifted until they get promotions they miss grades not knowing that how that's going to mess up their ability to to be adequate in their social interactions and so they don't really miss nothing because it catches up with them later on. God is so good to us until he won't let us miss places of growth. He won't do that. He won't do that. None of us are superior to anybody else. We have different assignments, but that's all. Same spirit, same Lord. And so listen, if I'm talking to you this morning and you know you're not where you need to be. You know you're not in the right relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of you not accepted him. You haven't been baptized. When we give this invitation, it's for you. I've been praying for you all week. I prayed for you this morning. I haven't arrived at this moment as a as just a sower. I've been sowing all week looking for a harvest and so if I'm talking to you and the Lord has spoke to you I'm asking you to be obedient now the doors of the church are open don't know what what uh, selection we're going to have to lead us in this moment but whatever it is it's going to be okay it's going to, it's going to speak right directly to you won't you come won't you come won't you come? Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadow come? Why should my heart For my heaven and home When Jesus is my portion A constant friend is he Just know his eye is on the spare And I know he watches over me. So I see because I'm happy. This morning I sing because I'm free. Oh, oh, oh his eye is on the I 
Ashi because I'm happy. If you're happy in Jesus, you ought to help me sing it. I see because I'm free. Oh, oh, oh his eye, I know his eye is on the if you're here today and if you're looking on and you don't know Jesus Christ then those of us who do we ought to have a burden for that we ought to have a yeah how many are saved this morning show of hands show of hands show of hands good good praise the Lord how many are not sure Raise your hand. Don't don't back. Raise your hand. You're not sure. Not sure. Not sure. Not sure. How many of you sure you're not? Yeah. Yeah. Raise raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay. Yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. I don't care what you say. You can't get no singing like that. In I don't, I don't care what club you're going to. They ain't, they ain't singing like that. They ain't singing where they start in the corner and and it gets so good to them that they stretch it out like that. I know. They ain't doing that. They ain't doing that. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, I'm glad I'm in the church. What about you, sister? No, I was, I was just, I was just asking you. You're glad you're a part of the church. That's all I was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Focused on that assignment. Yeah, Burns. It's good to be in the church, ain't it? Good to be in Christ. Yeah. When a world is upside down like ours is right now, just one thing after another. Yeah, for the believer. For the believer, we look and see it as an opportunity for God's glory. Hallelujah. 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 Ain't nobody going to stop me from praising him. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, because I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms, and so are you. So are you. Yeah, we commemorate that safety when we come to the table. And... Um, uh, we remember the sacrificial life of Jesus and what he said for his church to do in remembrance of him, in remembrance of him. And so we gather, um, this is post-COVID, so we do it a little different. It takes us some time to peel back. The, but that ain't, that ain't really it. That ain't it. Stronger than the symbolism is the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. That if I brought a loaf of bread in here today, yeah, and some lemonade, the, 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 the symbol is one thing. 
the meaning, the real meaning of it is something else. And, and it's these symbols that, that bring us together as the family of God. Hallelujah. These symbols, God is amazing that he could take these little symbols and hold his church universal together. Yeah, and as often as you do, he says, you do in remembrance of me. So those of you that's at home, I'm trying to give you time to go get uh, a piece of cracker, a piece of bread. You go get whatever you need and come on back, come on back and sit and, and let's eat and drink together. Eternal God, we love it and we thank you for this moment of sharing. Bless every person here. Uh, bless their families. Uh, we're grateful for uh, families that struggle with the faith and claim that they are agnostic and atheist based upon the examples that they've seen from people who are confessing you as Lord and Savior. I pray, oh God, that even now that I'm able to cast seed into their hearing and heart, the power of the Holy Spirit can then take that seed to places that I can't even see. Bless our efforts, strengthen us, keep us. Bless this church and every church open in your name. Hold us to preaching the gospel of Jesus. Not, not a socio-political something that not gonna move people to salvation. Help us to stay true to your word and then let us work the works of him who sent us while it is day knowing that night is coming. Help us to understand what it means to be the church in times like these. And so God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for the mercies that you've given us today. Lord have mercy you've touched our minds and you regulated our minds even when the enemy thought he could break our rest you settled the situation you, you, you spoke peace to us and here we are celebrating together your goodness and your grace and so bless us collectively and do so one by one. Uh, persons who desire to be here but are not. Uh, those that's looking on every household. God, I pray you bless them. Yeah, I can't tell you how to bless them, but I'm asking you to bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell, tell your neighbor quickly, God is good. Just go and tell him like you know it. Yes, he is. 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 Yeah, God is good. God is good. Yeah, he's worthy of all of that. Yes, he is. Yeah, he's worthy of all of that. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah, good morning, good morning. Yeah. All right. All right. Good to see you this morning. How's the wife? Is she here today? She'll be here second service. She'll be here the second service. Okay. All right. How you feel? Yeah. You look good too, man. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing, man? Look at you, you getting old. I mean, younger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just teach. Okay. All right.
What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sins? Come on, church, let's sing it. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me? What can make me whole? Nothing but, but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. Just is that blood that makes me white. Second verse, for my pardon, for my pardon, this I see. You say nothing, nothing but the for my cleansing, for my cleansing, this nothing but nothing but come on, let's sing it together. Oh precious. Precious is that makes me makes me white as no other no other fount nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious! Oh, precious! That, that makes me want no uh, other found nothing but nothing but the blood at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart Come on, you know it. Help me sing it. It was there. It was there. I received. And now I am happy all the day. Come on, everybody sing it. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden rolled away. Everybody sing at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there that I received, and now I am happy. Oh, second verse. Was it for crimes that I have done? He grown up on the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown and love beyond. Come on, 
let me hear you sing it. Everybody at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first and the bird. Oh, it, it was there by me. I received. And now I am happy. Oh, one more time at the cross. Sing at the cross. At the cross. Where I first. And the burden. Time. Everybody at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first and the burdens of my heart. It was there by me. I received my sight. of worshiping God and our giving. Do we have any guests this morning? Do we have any guests? Just wave. If... Okay, I see. Well, good to have you. Good to, good to have you. And then it's good to see uh, everybody that's present uh, on today. Yes, Lord. Yeah, we working our way. We working our way. Working our way. All right. Our ushers are coming. It's offering time. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's offering time, Shalom. You may call the office at 314-653-2300. Drop off or mail your check to the church at 5491 North Highway 67, Florissant, Missouri, 63034. Through Realm via the church website at www.shalomccop.org. Or you may text S. C C O P to seven three two. Greetings, Shalom. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, "Everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love." The prison ministry is in need of volunteers. While there is a need for the female population, there is an even greater need for the male population. Our black males, especially our black youth and young adults, 
are being incarcerated at disproportionate rates. This is an ideal opportunity to show them that hope is not lost, mentor and minister about God's grace. The prison ministry meets every Tuesday at the St. Louis County Jail located in Clayton. To sign up or for more information, visit the church website at www.shalomccop.org or email admin, A-D-M-I-N, at shalomccop.org. And remember, time is the best gift you can give because it is the one thing that can never be replaced. Shalom Church has a history of encouraging education through discipline structured learning because we believe that this ensures a pathway to successful living. As a way to continue our mission, we will partner with three schools, selecting a family from each to provide support and promote love, faith, hope, and peace. Families will come from Monroe Elementary, Hazelwood Central, and Confluence Academy. We will also be selecting students from Shalom Church. Be on the lookout for more information in the weeks to come. Today from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., we will be offering all doses of the COVID vaccine. Protect yourself and your loved ones by getting your vaccination or your booster. On Saturday, July 16th, the Sightman Center mammogram van will be at the Lindbergh campus with slots available as early as 8.30 a.m. Attention all students heading to college. The Next Generation invites you to join them on Saturday, July 16th for Ready, Set, no. This is an open panel discussion to better prepare you for the next phase of your academic journey. Topics will cover time management, social and emotional wellness, and safety. You do not want to miss this. Join us for our weekly Wisdom Wednesday services at 7 p.m. via live stream. Stay connected with us by following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. Let's remember Shalom family. Even during these unprecedented times, we are still committed to Christ's work through preaching, teaching, and praying. Those are your announcements. Stay safe, remember to mask up, and have a blessed week.